So what exactly is a drone, right? So technically they are called UAVs, which stands for Unmanned Aerial Vehicles. As the name suggests, they are simply aircraft without a pilot on board. Any aircraft that can be controlled remotely or can be programmed to fly on its own, a small, a very, very cheap, affordable drone can actually get you capture breathtaking views, whether it's personal use, professional filmmaking or you know, commercial photography, anything, right? So, and, and this opened up so many creative possibilities. The technology has progressed so much that you don't even need to control these drones anymore. So they know which shot to take, when to take, and in which angles, all of this autonomous, no one needs to tell them where. So imagine in, in, in order to create something like this, a map that looks like this for a road, for a new road that has to be constructed, a hundred kilogram stretch, it takes about three months time just, and, 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 until this is complete, the road even cannot be planned. Forget about building. You know, drones can survey these, say, 100 kilograms stretch in about four days' time, three days' time, instead of three months. So if you think of, you know, the major milestones in human history, like discovering fire or learning how to farm, forging tools, you know, shaping metals. So all, all dimensions like, uh, you know, inventing the, the fuel powered vehicles like cars, trucks, airplanes, nuclear energy, computers, internet, and most recently AI. I'm very, very sure that, you know, the drone revolution will be named right up there with them. Imagine a world where you can sit anywhere on the planet and aerial robots are out there actually doing, doing tasks for you. You know, sounds like the stuff of ancient mythology is used to be able to control things from anywhere, isn't it? So yeah, in today's session, I, I aim to provide very broad overview of the past, the present and the future of the drones. I'll also share some insider insights into how drones are reshaping various industries and I also would like to provide my, my perspective about where I see, you know, future of drones heading towards. Yeah. So since I'm told from various walks of life, so I thought it'd be, it would be best to start with the basics. So what exactly is a drone, right? So technically they are called UAVs, which stands for unmanned aerial vehicles. As the name suggests, they are simply aircraft without a pilot on board. Any aircraft that can be controlled remotely or can be programmed to fly on its own. So falls into this category of being called as a drone. So whether it's someone flying it with a remote or the drone property, this, and, and there's no hum, human sitting inside it, so we can call it as a drone. Now, while most people people know drones are these, you know, those small flying gadgets that you see in the sky, there's often a very big misconception, misconception that all drones look like this, the one in this picture. But in reality, there are actually many types of drones out there. And this is just one kind, but probably the one which is more popular. This one particular is called, since it has four, you can see that it has got four propellers or you can call it called rotors. It is more specifically called as a quadcopter, quad for four. If it has six more to six rotors, it's a hexacopter. If it, if it has eight motors, it's called quadcopter, and so on and so forth. So the quadcopter is by far the most popular type, and it's what you'll typically find if you are browsing for drones on Flipkart or Amazon, or surely the ones you might have seen flying during weddings these days, right? So now it looks like a helicopter, so it's called a helicopter drone, and this looks like you know a typical airplane which we all fly, usually usually fly when we travel. This is in technical terms, we call this as a fixed wing drone. It's called fixed wing because just like airplanes, we fly the lift or the, the, the aircraft is flying because of the lift generated by its wings. So this is different from multi-copters or helicopters where especially, but in a fixed wing aircraft, it's the wing that provides lift. And lastly, this is called as a VTOL, VTOL drone, which stands for vertical takeoff and vertical landing. It's just a combination of a multi-copter and a fixed wing drone, the ones on the left and the ones on the third one. 
basically it combines the best of both worlds it can take off and land vertically like a multi copter but once it is in air it flies like a plane without the need for a runway actually so there are countless other types of drones some drones out there and that's it so so many of there are countless other types of drones so many of which are just combination or variations of you know these four basic types of drones and they are designed to meet specific needs you know some applications require very long flight time whereas some applications need the drones to be very very small they have to be navigating into the into very tight spaces and so on so the choice of the drone really depends on the job it's being used for all right so also don't be misled by the fact that all these drones in these pictures look like they are around the same size but in reality they can range from you know being in um, as large as a commercial aircraft you know capable of carrying hundreds of passengers so so to specifically talk about the four pick i've used in this camps and the largest one is about 500 kilograms so the size and weight really depend on what the drone is built to do so while all this might sound very you know fancy very high tech drones are actually when when you break them down right so in fact i'd say they are probably one of the simplest types of vehicles compared to the ones we are all familiar or even a two wheeler these drones are much more simpler than even a even a two wheeler that we that we ride right so take a quadcopter for example which you can see on this slide so all it has is four simple motors right that spin and these motors are connected with one propeller each or a rotor each so when these motors spin this propeller spin in turn these propellers generating that lift so in a sense this is it right so at the end of the day this is what is and there are just few more components that make up this drone so these in order of, in order for the motors to spin these motors are connected to something called as electronic speed controllers which regulate the amount of current that is flowing to the these motors so the more the current the higher the speed the higher the speed the more is the lift just just putting it in a very very simple uh, terminology right so and at the end of the day all these speed controllers are connected to something called as a flight controller drone right so the flight controller is a boss it tells the electronic speed controllers what to do when to do when to consume more and more current when to when to consume less current so it's also connected with i mean the flight controller has a bunch of sensors to understand oh, what, where am i facing what is my orientation what is my direction it's also connected to something called called as gps which we all know which gives it where it actually is standing right so in a nutshell that is it interestingly if you think about it right so the flight controller components that i mentioned are similar to what's inside your phone and in fact with a bit with a little bit of coding you can you could theoretically replace this flight controller with your phone you can actually put a phone on to these this this uh, drones connect your phone with a bit of coding and you can make those drones fly so that's how simple these drones are and just again controlling this quadcopter is also very simple if you look at this picture think of red circles here on the right side as propellers spinning faster than normal so if you want the drone to move up all you have to do is you have to just you know spin all four propellers faster so it it just moves up and if you don't if you want uh, your drone to move forward spin the propellers that are behind the rear side propellers faster so it just moves far forward so similarly if you want to go right or left rotate right rotate left so it's pretty simple to control it in an essence right so but either ways i think i've oversimplified everything here uh, a bit too much getting you to think that you know this can be done in everyone's backyard but in the reality it takes generally a years of effort to make these things smart and safe safety is the in aviation in aerospace industry because there's simply no room to fail when once you build this you know if it fails it's uh, generally it generally leads to a catastrophe right so so it's pretty you know the devil is in the details there again that's how a quadcopter works i i would not go ahead to explain each of them but just wanted to give a very broad overview of what these things do and how they how they work so similarly helicopter generates lift as well as the movement with just one main quadcopter the helicopter only has a one blade and a fixed wing does not have any spinning parts spinning parts that generate lift but they have a wing when moved 
as fast as it can be, it just creates lift like an airplane, right? So, and here's a very interesting fact that really puts things into perspective. I really wanted to, you know, explain how simple these drones are mechanically, right? So, a car of the same size as a drone may have about 30,000 mechanical components. But if you build a truck and less than less than thousand components, so that's how simple these are in comparison with our day-to-day -day vehicles today. And if you check Wikipedia, right, so you will find that use of drones date all the way back to hundreds, right? So when there were even air aircraft was not you know invented by uh, Wright brothers, and it's back the Wikipedia packs you with a ton of history. There's so much development over the years that I couldn't even fit it in a readable format in one slide here. So it's just way too crammed up. So, but the, the common essence of all the history is that from 1800s to all the way to early 2000s, it is, you know, every major milestone in drone history has been driven by or for military use cases, the defense use cases. So nothing else, right? there's no, nothing called as, you know, commercial or, or, or hobby or consumer use case. So even though drones have been around longer than the commercial airliners themselves, I bet that 99% of the people had never even heard of them until early 2000s. So early 2000s, why? Because the first time most of us probably heard the term drone was during the war between US and, or rather the war US, you know, way to. That's when large drones called as Predator, the ones like in this picture, were used to launch missiles or even to con conduct reconnaissance mis missions from really sitting thousands of miles away. Right? So this this phase really sparked interest across the world with many governments pushing to either procure or develop such system because everyone, oh, okay, this is the future now, right? So for their, for their own defense systems. And the next major milestone, according to me, was when Amazon made headlines in 2013 when its founder Jeff Bezos announced a primer, their ambitious drone delivery project, promising the same journey to your doorstep using drones. So, so at that time, we all thought, you know, oh yeah, if, if such a big person is announcing this, maybe drone deliveries to our homes would become a reality in the next three, four years. Well, later, why that hasn't been the case yet, but this announcement and the push from Amazon was a was a big major turning point because it really got the private sector. I mean, until until that time, it was all government, military, defense. So from that point onwards, it really got the the private sector buzzing and exploring. Oh, okay, drones is a reality now. What can we build them? What can we use them for? So that really kicked in the private industry. I call the most important player in the history of drones. It's a company called as DJI. It's a Chinese company. They have single-handedly accelerated the global adoption of drones. You know, when they actually in 2013, they, 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 they launched their first low cost consumer drone for personal photography. DJI simply, you know, created a system that was not only affordable, but also incredibly easy to use and, and also safe, right? So simple that even a grandmother could fly, you know, learn flying. So, so that has been their contribution in, in, in less than 10 years, which is from 2014 to now to 2024. Drones have become a household term and a major thanks is to DJI. They have played a really pivotal role in, 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 in making that happen. And more recently, and unfortunately, the ongoing Ukraine-Russia war that has brought about many new ways of using drones that have actually changed the field ever. And it's been a significant development, but I suppose the less we say about it, the better, at least for the purposes of this talk. But just putting it in perspective for you, these are the four that have played a very significant role in the history of drone development and all of this you know imagine the uh, beauty of it right so all of these four events happening within the last 20 years span now yeah i would you know quickly also like to give you a perspective of some numbers where uh, you know what is the world we are living in in terms of drones so contrary to the popular belief the you know military there are only 30000 to 1 lakh drones in operation for the military use cases all trees today. Although it is quite difficult to judge the right number, but this is the number that most so, so score. 27 lakh drones that are being used for commercial purposes by various companies for various use cases. And just see the contrast of the types. In just 2023 alone, about 75 lakh consumer drones sold worldwide. 75 lakh just in 2023. So yeah, although the consumer drones phenomena started only 10 years ago, as opposed to 200 years of military history, 
you can see the number of drones that are just sold for consumer market just last year right so the market size itself in just last year on was about 35 billion dollars all of these teams put together so it's 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 real as we speak <laughs> yeah so today's session was really on how drones are actually you know changing the life we lead right so without having we are not witnessing them on a daily basis at least not yet but behind the scenes they are really changing our lives they are being used by various industries to do various tasks but at the end of the day all i wanted you to have in mind is drone is just a vehicle right what does a vehicle do either it carries people it carries luggage it carries something it does some job so ultimately it just carries something drones instead of carrying over road they carry aerial drones carry something aerial that's all right so and what that a particular drone carries it depends on where we are using it it could be a brings to my first use case so one of the just discussed first big break breakthroughs for drones in the consumer market was actually photo i mean needless to say it is photography uh, which is what dj is also known for now in this case it is carrying a camera right so so drones really over last 10 years they revolutionized photography right so in just 10 years they they just changed the whole photography landscape like never before and before before 2013 you needed a helicopter to get those amazing aerial shots that you see in movies and so on and so forth right so now it's very simple you know a small a very very cheap affordable drone can actually get you capture breathtaking views whether it's personal use professional filmmaking or you know commercial photography anything right so and and this opened up so many creative possibilities the technology has progressed so much that you don't even need to control these drones anymore so they know which shot to take when to take and in which angles all of this autonomous you no know, one needs to tell them where and when how i would like to just play this clip up quickly just to give you a perspective of where the technology is today yeah you can see this is a very very smart one of the very smart drones available in the market no one is flying it they are just cycling or walking running jogging the drone just follows them autonomously they know which shots are the best and what should be the cinematographic effect so all of these things are done autonomously there is no remote involved whatsoever so this is the world we are living in today and um, yeah this has really changed photography forever the second use case that i would like to talk about is one which is mainly related to civil engineering domain i'm sure you all would have noticed an instrument that looks something like this a person standing slightly afar with a scale with a scale in his hand a scale in a tall scale in his hand it's called as a total station so it is these kinds of instruments are used anywhere from construction small constructions to building roads railways any any infrastructure that you need to build right so it is used to generate a map called as a contour map that is on the right side of this slide something that looks like this as layman in civil engineering we don't understand right so imagine in in, in order to create something like this a map that looks like this for a road for a new road that has to be constructed 100 kg stretch it takes about 3 months time just and 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 until this is complete the road even cannot be planned forget about building without creating a map like this which takes 3 months time to you know measure about 100 right so traditionally this is yeah slow manual process but drones have really really changed the game you know drones can survey this say 100 kg stretch in about 4 days time 3 days time instead of 3 months and they do it very with very very high precision they are now you know you know being used for all sorts of infrastructure projects like roads buildings right? being used to, to traditionally do the job that ground based you know, traditional equipment used to do and it's a real game changer for a lot of industries because now we can plan faster execute faster even layman like us now can understand the data these drones are generating right so instead of a contour map that no one could understand all uh, you can see a small clip that is being created it's a 3d model that has been created using you know data from drones so all of us can understand not just civil engineers and a lot of measurements can be very very easily made and in, in very short time and this is where you know aerial surveying is the first use case we served with my first startup that i co-founded is that i co-founded a company called as aerio it is located in bangalore now we started with a team of four people now we have a strong 600 plus people and we map about 40000 villages so far in india it transcribes to about 1.5 crore acres that we map in our 10 year journey 
and uh, probably out of the 1.5 crore acres that we 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 surveyed about 120 million people lived in those areas so this is what we have done in the last and we were when we started in 2014 we were the first in the country to use drones for aerial mapping so we when i remember when i we used to go use these drones to capture the data you know in, in some of the villages i've even encountered thousands of people just coming there and it all became becoming an exhibition with you know people coming to sell ice creams and and all sorts of mela kind of vibe uh, but i think that's all changed right right now